Are you having a hard time creating responsive web animations? Well, here are two of my favorite tricks for responsive compositions into Mold Hive. Probably one of the biggest challenges for creating interactive web animations is making the composition responsive. Luckily, to Mold Hype comes with built-in features for flexible and adaptive layout variations. Creating the right effect, however, can still be a little bit daring. So today, I want to show you two simple but effective tricks for responsive compositions using groups. Here we go. First thing I want to show you is using a group as a wrapper for your entire composition. This makes it pretty easy to apply scaling for the entire content and preserve aspect ratios. This is something you can easily do after you finish working on your project and before shipping it off. Simply add a group and place all elements inside of it. Note that you can apply flexible layout behavior like pinning, sizing or scaling for elements but not for the stage itself. Thus using a group allows you to set these properties sort of for your entire composition. When you create a group, it will per default set the boundaries to match the containing elements. But you can resize the boundaries of your group on the stage without affecting the layout of the contained elements. This might be useful when you have elements outside of the stage, for example, to animate them in at a later point in time. That's why it is a good idea to set the content overflow of the group to hidden. Now you can set the properties for the responsive behavior of the group. For example, making sure it remains centered and shrinks the content to fit, which is pretty much behaving like CSS contained for background images. Don't forget to set the width and height of your entire composition to relative values, of course, in order to make this work. In my second example, I'm going to use a group in order to help me with the positioning of elements within a responsive banner. I often hear that this poses quite a challenge for many users out there. Relative values and flexible layouts can sometimes mess up your entire design. Here, groups are very helpful to create design entities that behave consistently. In my example here, I want the logo to always remain at the upper left corner of my banner, which is pretty easy. But the scenery, on the other hand, should remain centered as a whole. Also, I don't want the single elements to be stretched out too far on large displays or collide on narrow ones which would be the case if I had set all the flexible layout properties for each item individually. So using a group allows me to neatly position all the elements in the center and allowing empty space to expand equally to the left and to the right of it. I could also apply a scaling that would affect all the elements evenly. And remember that you can resize the group independently of the actual content. So in some cases, it might even be helpful to create a group for a single element, just so that you can position it properly, for instance, in regard to the center of the composition. It might take some practice to get the results right, but I hope I could steer you in the right direction with this little tutorial. Let me know in the comment sections if you have any questions or problems in that regard. Also make sure to check out other videos and remember to like and subscribe our channel. Happy animating!